Hi everyone, welcome to my next Houdini tutorial. Um, this one is going to be on how to do RBDs, um, emit RBDs, um, and how to use some, some switch nodes and some different things to make this example that I'm showing on screen right now. We'll call Space Serial. Um, and then at the end, we'll cover some attribute transfer stuff to make it kind of a cool um, effect for the collision object. So let's hop over to Houdini and get started. All right, here we are in Houdini. Um, the first thing we're going to do is drop down a geo node, and then um, I'm going to make some objects to make for this to make the serial with. Um, so I'm going to use a bunch of platonic solids, like so, um, and I'm going to make a bunch of these. And I'm just going to fast forward the video here so you don't have to watch it. Alrighty, you can see now we've got a bunch of objects here. And then we're just going to go ahead and merge these. And we're going to run these into a connectivity SOP so we can get some random color. Class here to points, the connectivity types to uh, primitive. And I think that's all we need on this one. And then next up, let's go ahead and do a copy to points. Run that into that side. And then now we are going to need particles to spawn um, for our copy to points here. So let's go ahead and make a sphere. Change this to bigger number, radius rate, all this stuff's fine. And let's go ahead and just move it up in space uh, because this is going to be our main emitter here for our objects. Cool. Um, let's throw down the mountain. This is just going to randomize our shape a little bit. Um, that'll make more sense. In later on as to why I'm doing this. Um, let's go ahead and raise our amplitude up a bit. And I think that's, let's go ahead and check animation and raise the pulse duration up. And let's go down to our fractal. I think this is, da, 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 da. Yeah, all this stuff is fine. Should be able to hit play and see some movement. Yep, terrific. Um, next up is going to be, let me zoom in here, the scatter, which is going to give us our points um, that we need. Let's go ahead and drill, lower this down to 33. Let's move our relax iterations down. And I think that's all we need for that. Yep, terrific. And last but not least, let's throw down a transform. And then we're going to use a little expression here um, at time multiplied by 360. 360. And then what that's going to do is rotate our sphere, and it's going to give us this kind of nice, like, helix pattern. Because uh, they're space serial, so it should look kind of funky. Uh, and then, last but not least, we're going to go ahead and put a switch down for this. And this is going to allow um, all the particles not to spawn at once. Um, we need a little bit of a break there. Um, so it's just not this huge constant stream of overlapping particles. And how we do that um, is this switch. I'm going to put a little expression in here. Random dollar FF. Let's give it that 
apply to. And I should say, as I'm doing this, um, this is just the way that I have learned to do this this certain effect. Um, there may be much easier, more efficient ways with VEX and things like that. Um, but this is just my workflow. So if I go in next up, we're going to do an attribute from pieces. And this is going to give, it's going to allow this copy to points to cycle through these various um, primitives. Or not primitives, shapes rather. So from our switch, we'll go into the left side or input one and then our copy to points is going to go to input two or I'm sorry our connectivity it's going to go to input two it's going to place that there and then we're just going to add a couple attribute randomizes um, for our points here uh, one thing we also want to do um, is change this attribute from pieces. We want to change this to class. And I think that's all with that guy. Just skipped over it. Should be should be fine. All right. So we have its attribute randomized. Let's go ahead and attribute randomized velocity. Um, and then let's do p scale. This is going to affect the the scale of each piece. Um, let's set that to one. We'll just say one to two point five. We can go back and change this, obviously, um, later on. So we have velocity, p scale, and then let's run that into our copy to points. There we go. And our piece attribute, let's go ahead and change that to class. We should be good to go there. So next up, let's go ahead and set up some collision objects um, for our RBDs to fall into. Make a bowl. I'm just going to drop down another sphere. Drop down a clip node. And there's our nice quick and easy bowl let's go ahead and just remesh this yeah i do this because it's just it's better to have for collision so this is going to be the collision object and this will be the display object that we actually see after remesh let's go ahead and just drop down a group and I'm just kind of setting this up for the attribute transfer for later on. So let's just call this target and set that to points. So there's these points I'll be able to transfer other attributes onto um, later on. So let's go ahead and do a grid. This is just going to be a ground plane um, that I want to put a material on, or I would use uh, the DOP ground collision but I do not want to do that just clean these up here now let's also go ahead and do a match size on this let's get here and set that to n happening ah the clip 
let's put this there we go let's get this clip up here and that should give us what we want there we go so I'm just going to take that off of there and just drop down a null Floor, all that bowl. And that we can merge those together later. Um, I think that's good for our collision setup. Let's just go ahead and put a window around that. And last but not least, let's go ahead and set the RBD up. So, first thing we're going to do is do an RBD config. here I don't think we really have to change much on this one with that all um, let's check RBD admit I don't think we have to do that but let's just do it just in case um, and then next up let's do an attribute adjust color this is where we're going to set our random colors Go here and go random, and we'll just keep this color ramp in there, and we'll change this to element or keep it at element number, and then change the seed. And I think that's it for that guy. And let's go ahead and last but not least, let's throw our RBD solver in here. All right, let's see what we get. We don't have anything yet because we don't have this ticked. Escape that and let's see what we get. Um, so this emit RBDs basically just initializes these pieces together. So as you can see, we're getting kind of these big clumps um, that we're going to need to separate. And we're going to do this with switches, um, which we've got already over here, but we're going to do it on a, in a few other spots here. So the main one, um, let's put up here. This will turn our emitter on off and we're going to do a switch if and then just make another null put that in and then we're going to put an expression on here this is going to be dollar f greater than one those which is the slash key um, so if you hold down shift and slash and then dollar f less than 100 so what this expression does um, is it says okay if frame if the frame number is greater than one do do something do this the switch um, if it's less than 100 switch it off so right now you can see at frame one it is switched on and then what will happen back down to our solver here i'm going to save the scene So we're going to get the these particles emitting um, until frame 100, and then it's going to turn off. Okay, sorry about that. Had a bit of a crash. 
Um, so as we're noticing with um, with the RBD solver here, so let's go back up to our P scale. Um, let's, I think we were at like around one maybe before. Um, and I think this is what caused the crash. So you can kind of see, let's go back to this reset. So this is the previous P scale. Um, so we can see these pieces are huge. Um, so if I go to my P scale now, and then let's just turn this down to like 0.1. And then jump back up to our RB RBD. So, and let's reset simulation and then run it again. And now we're going to get a much better result, as you can see. Terrific. Um, so let's go ahead and hook up our collision objects here. We're just going to merge those together, and it's going to go into the solver. So it's going to go into collision geometry. Let's go ahead and raise our emitter up. It's obviously way too close. Let's maybe go to like six. We're getting something now. Let's go ahead and make our bowl much bigger. Here, just put in a transform. Let's raise that up. So I'm just kind of running through this testing now. All right. So now we can see our cereal is not going into the bowl. So how do we fix that? Um, so on the solver itself, let's go to collision. Let's change this to deforming and concave. And while we're in here under setup, let's go ahead and change our sub steps up to four. Everything else should be fine in here. Forces, let's just add a little bit of drag and drag spin. And I think let's just do that for now. So it's going to be a little bit slower because of the sub steps. And actually, you know what? Just for the sake of time, I'm going to take this back down to one. Emitter's still a little bit too high, so let's go back over here. Ten. Well, there we go. 
let's try that. is looking good uh, we're getting a few little places where it's escaping but that's okay uh, we also need to let's just go ahead and add some subdivisions in, on this collision object give us some more area Let's go ahead and scale this up to just in case. So let's go ahead and look at our attribute adjust color and let's drop down a merge just so we can see everything together in context. Notice we're getting these orange particles coming out first. So let's take a look at this real quick. Right, let's start this at 10, maybe 110. I help give it a little bit of pre roll, see what happens. Yeah, I think that helped. Let's turn on our light. Still getting those orange, but at least they're kind of mixed in with the rest of them, which is fine. Um, the other thing that we can probably switch here. Let's maybe do every six frames. Let's see what we get with that. Might not be enough particles, but we'll take a look. Uh, that definitely helped. There we go. Go down here, take a look, here we've got cereal. So now um, to get some more cereal in this bowl, because right now it's kind of sparse, you can see it's not, not too much coming through. Um, we can just keep dialing these numbers, which I'm gonna pause the video and just do this with, with time lapse um, so you don't have to watch, uh, but it'll give you an idea of how to kind of tweak these values.
Okay, so now we can see down here. And there we go. There is our space serial. Um, you can keep tweaking these values um, to your liking. And then in part two, I'm going to go over the rendering of this. I'll see you there.